Hi everyone. So, today in our statistical inference lecture series, uh, I am going to talk about uh, how to find a complete sufficient statistic. So, basically uh, there are two methods to find a complete sufficient statistics. The first one is using the definition of a complete sufficient statistic and the second one is using the facts uh, that uh, the statistic that belongs to an exponential family distribution is a sufficient statistic and a minimum sufficient statistic and also is a complete sufficient statistic. Okay? So, if you can prove a particular distribution belongs to exponential family then it will be much more easier to find the complete sufficient statistic. But there are some situations like if you are distribute if you are random variable belongs to a distribution like uniform distribution within 0 and parameter theta then in that case that will not be an exponential family distribution then in that case you have to use um, the definition of the complete sufficient statistic all right so first i am going to talk about the definition of the um, complete sufficient statistic so the definition is as follows so let's we have a family of probability density functions or probability mass functions which denote as uh, f of t given theta for the statistic tx then this uh, t of x is a complete sufficient statistic if the expectation of uh, g of t given theta is equal to 0 for all theta or in other words you can say that probability of g theta equal 0 given theta is always equal to 1 for all theta. Okay? So, in this case the, the most important thing is if the uh, if you know the uh, distribution of x then after that uh, you should um, identify the distribution of tx. Okay? So, in most of the times this tx will be your sufficient statistic. So, in other words uh, using a, a definition what we are going to do is first we are going to find a sufficient statistic and then uh, we are going to find a distribution of that sufficient statistic and after that we are going to find whether this expectation of uh, g of t given theta is equal to 0 for all theta or not. So, if this condition satisfied that means uh, this t of x will be a um, complete sufficient statistic. Okay. So, now we are going to discuss an example. So, the example is uh, find the complete sufficient statistic for uniform distribution we have a distribu the random variable is between 0 and theta okay so if x is uniform distribution with distributed with uh, within 0 and theta you can write the probability density function which is 1 over theta and this is the indicator function where x is always a greater than t uh, sorry less than theta so you can write uh, rewrite this one in terms of the maximum value so this 1 over theta so it actually should be 1 over theta to the power n here i am going to write the joint distribution of all x's it is 1 over theta to the power n divided uh, times indicator function um, of the maximum value of n maximum value of x less than theta okay so because here the maximum uh, you have a joint function of x1 greater than theta sorry less than theta x2 less than theta up to x uh, the maximum value xn greater than theta so, this will all equals to 1 if x and the maximum value is less than theta. So, this is like an um, this is in the form uh, according to the factorization theorem. So, this is like our g 
T x given theta based on our factorization theorem. Okay. So, because of that you can tell by factorization theorem our T of x which is equal to x of n or the largest old statistic is a sufficient statistic for theta. So, now our goal is to prove this uh, largest order statistic is a complete, a complete sufficient statistic or not. So, in order to do that, first I am going to find the distribution of the largest order statistic. For to do that, I am going to find uh, the uh, cumulative distribution function of x n or the largest order statistic. So, which is equal to probability of uh, x n less than t. So, this will be equal to um, probability of x uh, less than t um, times n because why? Because, uh, because this thing is equal to what? Probability x 1 um, less than 2 uh, less than t times probability x 2 less than t up to probability x n less than t. But as you can remember this the distribution of this all x's are identical distribution. So, the so you can because of that you can write this as a product of this. So, so it will be equal to probability of x less than t a whole thing to the power n. Okay. So, now I am going to find the probability where x is less than t. So, you know the uh, probability density function of uh, x which is equal to 1 over theta. So, I am going to integrate 1 over theta with respect to this interval because x is now between 0 and t. So, our integration will be start from 0 and it should be uh, to t 1 over theta times dt and you have this power n. Okay. So, when you integrate this one it will be t over theta and you have this whole thing to the power n. So, this is our accumulative distribution function. So, if you have a cumulative distribution function to find the probability density function what we can do is you can differentiate with this a cumulative distribution function with respect to uh, t. So, so, so th that is what I did over here. So, in order to find the, so this is our PDF probability density function. To find the probability density function, I took the derivative of this function with respect to t. So, first I need to use the power rule. So, it is n times t over theta to the power n minus 1 times derivative of inside uh, based on the chain rule. So, but derivative of inside is what? 1 over theta. So, if you simplify this you will get this n times t to the power n minus 1 uh, times theta to the power negative n and here our t is between this range from 0 to theta. Okay. So, now I am going to find a function of a function of t which is g of t such that expectation of g of uh, t given theta is equal to 0 for all theta. Okay. So, expectation of a random variable you can write it like this. So, this is a expectation of a function of a random variable. So, expectation of a function of a random variable is we have to integrate within the interval of that random variable. So, in so in this case the interval of the random variable is from 0 to theta. So, we have to integrate from 0 to theta g t times the probability density function of t. So, which is equal to n times t to the power n minus 1 times theta to the uh, power minus n. So, this is the basic formula to find the expectation of a function of a random variable. Okay. So, now I am going to take the derivative of both sides. 
I am going to take the derivative of both sides. So, I have written this partial derivative notation like this in both sides. Okay, so now I am moving to the next page. So, here, so basically the expectation in this term here the expectation of a any random variable is a constant. So, if you take the derivative of the expectation it should be 0 because why? Because the expectation of a constant is always equal to 0. So, when you take the expectation of the left side of the previous e uh, formula then it, it should be equal to 0 okay? like this expectation of the left hand side is of this formula it should be equal to 0. Now, I am going to find the derivative of this. So, in order to find a derivative I am going to use the product rule. Okay? So, here so this part will be a 1. Uh, so, I am going to split this function into two parts. So, this is the first part and this is the second part. Okay? So, this is how I am going to take the derivative. So, first I am going to uh, use uh, I am going to factor out theta to the power negative n and I am going to find the derivative of the rest of the formula like the product rule of the derivative plus now derivative of theta to the power minus n with respect to theta times the other term over here. Okay? So, when you consider this first part of this equation here this uh, this thing you can rewrite in terms of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, if you so based on the fundamental theorem of calculus if you have something like this uh, derivative with respect to theta integration from 0 to theta g t uh, with respect to d t is equal to g of theta. So, I am going to use the uh, uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. So, when you apply this one to here it will be equal to what theta to the power negative n times g theta times theta to the power n minus 1 times n plus here 0. Why it is 0? Because the second term in the integral is equal to uh, expectation of g theta sorry g t given theta. So, initially at the beginning of the question here we assume what here we assume um, this g t function such that expectation of uh, g t given theta is equal to 0 for all theta. Okay? So, because of that um, expectation of g t given theta is equal to 0. So, because of that this second term will goes to 0. So, now you have only this term g of theta times theta to the power minus 1 times n because here you can simplify this theta to the power negative n and theta to the power n minus 1 and you can rewrite it one as uh, theta to the power negative 1 which will be equal to 0. So, now you have equation where g of theta times theta to the power negative 1 times n equals 0. So, in this equation you can see that n is a non uh, is a value which is not equal to 0 and theta also a value which is not equal to 0. So, if this function or if this term equals to 0 that means what g theta should be equal to 0 for all theta. Okay? So, because of that you can say that here g theta is equal to 0 for all theta. So, this satisfy the definition of the uh, complete sufficient statistic because here we found a based on the definition of the complete sufficient statistic we found a function uh, of t x such that expectation of a g t given theta is equal to 0 for all theta or probability of theta given g t is equal to 0 of 
equal 1 for all theta okay so because of that because of this you can write what because of this you can write probability theta gt is equal to 0 is equal to 1 for all theta so because of that you can say what t is a complete sub here statistic for theta so this maximum value of x n is a complete sub here statistic for theta okay so in in my next video i am planning to do another example of uh, how to find the complete sub here statistic based on the definition of a complete sub here statistic okay so that's it for today and if you think this video is useful to you and uh, just put a like on my video and please subscribe my youtube channel if you want to learn a um, lot of new things like this in statistics thank you